Hi, this is Mark Henry, author of Dancing with Energy, Healing, Magic, and Mysticism. Well, today I want to talk a little bit about how to use psychic abilities and tools to find hidden treasure. Now, this uh, idea came to me about a week ago because I've been keeping track of um, Forrest Fenn. If you haven't been looking at the news, Forrest Fenn is this wealthy art dealer who um, supposedly buried treasure in a wooden box somewhere in the, near Santa Fe, New Mexico. Now, the interesting part about this is that Mr. Forrest Fenn gave clues in a poem, a very vague poem, uh, that is contain, it's contained in his, it's in his memoirs um, that he published uh, several years ago. But, you know, you can find the poem on the internet if you're so inclined and want to read uh, what the clues are and maybe find the treasure yourself. Uh, so that was, um, he buried it six years ago. So he's 86 now, so it puts him about 80. Um, he wanted to do this because he stated that he enjoyed going on adventures and looking for things. Um, he wanted people to get away from their smartphones, away from the gaming, <laughs> and go out and outdoors and just have a good time. And what better than to have an adventure? So, um, people have been searching for this for the last six years. There's upwards of an estimated 100,000 people have looked for this. And according to Mr. Finn, they have all failed. Even though somehow um, he knows that people have come within 200 feet of it. I suspect he might have cameras around in the area to be able to monitor um, these things. Uh, the treasure itself is valued at near a million dollars so it supposedly contains gold coins American Eagle gold coins it contains gold dust gold nuggets precious gems uh, his autobiography um, a Spanish ring from the 17th century and a couple other items that equal up to a large value now recently he's come in the news which has gotten my attention uh, because uh, two men have recently died in the Rio Grande um, again this treasure is supposedly near Santa Fe um, they died in the Rio Grande and it caused kind of raised the um, red flags of law enforcement and law enforcement called up Mr. Fenn the phone and said hey why don't you take your treasure and bring it home and um, no one else uh, will die or put themselves in danger for uh, trying to find this uh, this treasure. So what you know, Mr. Finn did uh, kind of negotiated and said, okay, well, um, he made a statement that it doesn't have anything to do with the Rio Grande River or water. So trying to keep people safe while they are looking for this um, this treasure. So that's the that's the backstory. Now, it came to my mind, okay, so how would one approach finding hidden treasure using psychic means and psychic tools? So, um, that's what this video is about. I just asked that if you actually use these tools, or if I, if I helped you in some way, pointed you in the right direction, consider giving me a, a small portion of the treasure. <laughs> just kidding, you don't have to do that. Um, but anyway, so we'll start out with talking about the pendulum and I will show you what a pendulum is it's just simply a chain with the weight on the end so that's what it is this is kind of a standard pendulum it has a point at the bottom which is it kind of helps to actually see the movements pretty well or if it needs to point to something but it can be anything it could you can just take a chain and put a ring tie the chain uh, to a ring and do it that way um, pendulum was was used. Pendulum work was used, um, you know, f a while back for doing things like if a woman is pregnant, trying to determine whether the sex is um, a male or a female, and if it swings a certain way, it's male, and if it does the opposite direction, it's a female. So, um, but what happens with the pendulum? It operates according to the um, I guess the law of automatism, which basically says that 
we make um, unconscious muscular movements which are amplified when we're holding something like a pendulum. So people have used it to try to access their unconscious minds about things that they may know that they may not consciously know. However, pendulums have been used for other things. Um, they because the the theory is also is that our unconscious mind, the deeper parts of our mind, may be able to access universal knowledge, things that we don't consciously know. The same way that if someone has intuitive abilities or psychic abilities, they may know something, but they won't necessarily have any sort of direct experience to account for it through their separate through their usual sensory apparatuses. So that's what um, a pendulum is. So how would you use this to find buried treasure? Well, if you had an idea of where it might be, what you can do is you can actually take the pendulum and put it over a map. And you can actually train the pendulum in a way you can say, okay, counterclockwise means yes, um, the other way means no or back and forth means yes and side to side means no and then after practicing that for a while you can uh, determine where something is or you can do it another way you can hold your pendulum and say show me yes show me no okay so it would you typically go either clockwise or counterclockwise However, if you could, if you were had enough abilities and uh, some practice and some training, you could hold it over a map and just slowly guide it over the map, and say, "Okay, when it gets to near the location, I want you to circle where the location of the treasure is." So you'd hold the pendulum and kind of scan it slowly over the map, and if it's in that location. Maybe the pendulum will be will be circling, and with what was it within that circle, you can kind of make some notation on your uh, your paper map. So something to think about. That's how one might do it. Again, it's accessing through on automatism, accessing um, um, supernatural knowledge by using the deeper parts of your mind, which are directing the pendulum. Now there's, um, but before I, I go into the next one, let me um, backtrack a little bit. I want to say that these tools that I'm mentioning are things that take, they're an art in itself. Each one of these is a separate art, and you need to kind of maybe try it, practice it. If you feel like you're not getting it, go to some type of training on the internet, or if you have somebody who does it in your community to kind of help you with that. Um, do it that way or sometimes people just have natural abilities and they can do this well you know right out of the gate and I feel that's the same way with all psychic abilities it's just like anything you know there are certain people who play sports let's say play golf or tennis or any other type of um, you know activity if we look at the people who go to the Olympics, there those people have worked hard, yes, but there is something about them, their genetics, about their makeup that puts them just above everybody else. That they might make it to the Olympics, while other people work hard, but you know for some reason they don't make it. The same thing with psychic abilities and psychic tools is that some people are naturally gifted, other people have to work hard. Um, or practice and you get better the more you practice so don't get discouraged if you start practicing these things and you don't find um, buried treasure or anything it just takes um, it's a little bit of persistence to get better so I want to make that I want to preface these tools with that statement okay so that now that that's out of the way uh, let me go on to dowsing now dowsing is uh, also was called um, water witching. Um, dowsing, let me see if I have a picture. I might have a picture of um, my phone of dowsing in case you've never actually seen dowsing rods. There are rods in an L shape. Let's see if you can see that. Okay. 
So they have handles, which you hold on to, and the copper extends out. And what happens is that you move forward, and you're holding the handles with the, the copper um, you know, rods going forward. And you can use these, um, these dowsing rods to find things. For example, people have traditionally used this to find water, to, you know, to find water, dig wells. People have used it to find gold. Uh, people have done it to find oil, which is very lucrative. The oil um, uh, companies are paying dowsers to go ahead and go into these, these certain areas and walk around for miles trying to find where the oil might be, and they pay them a fee, you know. If they in fact dig for it and they find oil. So this has been around a long time. Now before they didn't actually use dowsing rods, they used maybe a stick that was kind of forked. They would hold the fork of the stick in each of the hands and what would happen is that if they were coming across water or oil, the, um, the stick would actually point downward as an indication of this is where the spot is. So um, that's basically how it works. Now, how would this relate to, to treasure? Okay, so imagine you use your pendulum. You were to locate a kind of a general area of where it was, and you were confident that this treasure is buried. So what you would do is you take your dowsing rods, presuming that you had this ability and some practice, and you would go along the area, and you would hold it, and when these dowsing rods cross, because before they're parallel while you're walking, if they cross, then you're onto something. That may be the treasure. Of course, like the pendulum, you would have to program it to say, um, okay, uh, I want you to cross when we come across uh, any type of gold, treasure, anything, whatever you, it is you're looking for. Program it, practice it. Before you even go and looking for treasure, you can maybe bury something in the yard and, you know, and then program it and see if it crosses around that area where you buried it, if you wanted to do it that way and kind of train the whole process. So what would happen is that, let's theoretically, when you came across the, the treasure that was buried, the dowsing rods would cross and that would tell you where you would need to dig. Pretty cool. Um, like I said, there are people who make a good deal of money looking for water and oil and stuff because they just are, are very gifted in the art of dowsing. If you're interested, dowsing rods aren't expensive. You can probably go on um, eBay or Amazon and buy some for like 10, 10 bucks and just practice on your own. So the next thing, and this is the last technique, there are other techniques you can use. Uh, however, the last one I want to talk about today is what I call embodiment. So what embodiment is, and this is kind of a, an advanced technique, but I, I think it's probably my favorite of, you know, the three. Okay, so what do we know about this treasure? We know the guy's name's Forrest Fenn. We can look up what Forrest Fenn looks like on the internet. If we have a picture, we can memorize his face, we have his name. What we can do is we can actually treat him almost as if he's a spirit, you know, or an entity, an angel or whatever. So what we could do is we can kind of, in the privacy of our own homes and living room, we can say Forrest Fenn, Forrest Fenn, Forrest Fenn. We can picture what Forrest Fenn looks like and something like ask you to be here with me. So what we're doing is actually in a way we're calling forth the spirit of this person even though he's living. Now there's a lot of explanation about why this works. We could be using our own imagination to tap into Forrest Fenn's mind. Some people claim that what we're actually doing is telepathy. So somehow we're drawing a bridge between you and Forrest Fenn. So we do that process, the three, calling his name three times. We imagine Forrest Fenn may be in our living room. 
and we can start to if we once we have everything right we can try to actually step into the space of where Forrest Finn is in our living room. If we can do that, we might get some different sensations. We might actually feel a little bit like Forrest Finn. We might feel like an 86 year old man. Uh, it, it, signs that this would work would be if you honestly had some images and things that come to mind maybe some images. What you're doing is you're, you're, you're going to be, once you step into this, you're going to be asking questions about the treasure. Okay, so where is the treasure? If you can do, if you, when you do that, you might get some images of maybe the landscape, um, some uh, things that are by the treasure, maybe you can maybe see the treasure. You may hear Mr. Finn's voice, maybe having a conversation possibly about where the treasure is. You might get a, just a, a feeling, a sense of where it is. But that's what you're, you're hoping for, to get some type of clues. Now, some people would say, you know, that this is bordering on unethical. You're maybe getting, you're tapping into somebody's mind without permission and this type of stuff. So I'm not interested really in getting into the ethics of all of that right now that's a whole other video that I could go into but if you if it was within your moral compass to be able to do this intervention that's how you would do it get some clues okay step out of Forrest Fenn the energy the imaginative space of where you put them and then go and write everything down because I promise you it's gonna be much like a dream state you know like when you wake up in the middle of the, um, the night or you wake up the night the morning after after you having some dreams if you don't write them down you're gonna lose a lot of it because it's very ephemeral and transitory so whatever impressions you get be sure to write them down immediately afterwards write them down in a notebook so that's basically how you do the embodiment exercise All right. Um, now there are other techniques you can use. You can use remote viewing. That's a whole other subject in itself of kind of trying to tune into where it is while you're in a trance uh, and writing stuff down. Um, the, the United States government has employed remote viewers for decades in order to for spying and to locate certain things. So maybe we'll talk about that another time. But thank you very much for. Uh, listening to me and I hope that uh, you find hidden treasures hidden treasures in a treasure chest or maybe treasure the treasure that's within yourself so talk to you later and I will see you next week